Hey guys, today we're going to import Minecraft into Blender and create this cool animation that you're seeing on screen right now. Let's get into it. By the way, this is the longer formatted tutorial. If you want to see the shorter one, then there's a link in the description. Anyways, let's get started. Wow! Okay, so here we are on my desktop. You can see that I already have a folder called Minecraft Tutorial that has nothing but my world in it. Just so that everyone already knows, my world is a Minecraft bedrock world, but I had to convert it into a Java world for this to work. If you have Java, then you'll have no issues. If you are using bedrock, you'll have to use Chunker, this online tool that will convert your bedrock world into a Java world. All you do is select it and then hit start upload. But assuming that you have that already done, or you go to mine waves and you can click download for Windows if you're on Windows, but I'm on Mac, which is kind of odd because I'm still on bedrock. But you can see here for Mac, and then click Mine Waves right here for Mac. But once you have it installed, we can go to it, select it, and open it. And you'll see that I immediately I get an error. This is because I don't have Java. If you have Java, again, you won't have this issue at all. It will show your worlds, and you just select what world you want this to work on. But because I can't do that, I just select OK, and then open Mine Waves. Then I'll need to hit open world, find your world, and select the world right here, the Lacerta world, and then level data. Open. And once it finishes loading, it says, yeah, error, blah, blah, blah. All it was saying is the blast furnace won't work, which is fine. But then you'll see that my world is now here. I already have a spot in mind that I'm going to do it, so I'm going to get there. By the way, you move by just clicking and dragging. So right here is where I'm wanting to export. This is a little witch hut that I have in game. And all you do to get this area to be exported is right click, drag, and select all your little box. Some blocks are visible, yes. So you can see that it automatically just adjusted the depth which made it deeper, but actually, when I said yes, I didn't really mean that. Because you can see that, in reality, most of the blocks that will be visible are good at 45. It went all the way down to negative something. But, if you want to edit this selection, you can just right-click on one of the corners and kind of slightly drag it like that. Once you have it, we can go to File, Export for Rendering, then we need a file name, and I'm just going to name it Minecraft Flyby. Then select a folder that you want it to be in. I want it in that Minecraft tutorial folder. Then click Save. Now you could just leave it as is and select OK, and it would import into Blender. But to make things easier, we are not going to do that, and we're going to select a couple things. OK, so the first thing is that we will not need the RGB, the A file but we will need the RGBA, so we're going to leave that there, Then we're going to deselect material per family. What this does is it would have a material for every single block. We don't want that because there's no reason to. We're only going to have one material, and then we're going to separate them into different materials when needed. A couple of blocks we will actually need to separate them into their own material, but we can do that inside Blender. Those blocks are the light blocks and water, if we want it more transparent and looking a little better. Now we will also select Make Group Objects. This will make it that every object or block will be selected in a full selection, making it easier to select them. Another option that you could do if you wanted to is delete floating objects, but I'm personally not going to do this because I have some floating leaves and I actually kind of like the look of them. Then select OK. Now once it exports, it will get this export statistics. I'm just going to select yes, which will show me export statistics for next time. From here, let's open Blender. So here in Blender, select everything with A, then X to delete it, then File, Import, and OBJ. Now find your folder where you saved it, mine would be under desktop, then Minecraft tutorial, then obj, which is right here. Import obj, wait a little bit, it could take a while depending on how large your world is, or part of your world you imported is. 
So you can see there isn't materials, but let's fix that by going into material preview mode. You can see this is kind of messed up, we will fix this in a bit. But let's go into shading and start fixing it slowly. So you can see when I select an object, you get the material. You can see when I go to materials, we only have one material besides the default one. That is exactly what we wanted. Now, we select this alpha, delete it, we don't really need it. And you can see that things are already looking better, but it's still not quite there yet. We need to put the alpha from this node into the principal BSDF node. This is still getting there, but you can see that it's kind of blurry on these edges. All we need to do is change the linear to closest and it's a whole lot more sharp. Now we need to go to the material properties, go down all near the way to the bottom, and where it says show backspace, this is make what's making it look really weird and kind of transparent, even though it shouldn't be like that. So uncheck it, and boom, that looks a lot better. Now we can also change this to alpha clip. And you can see that we're now getting everything looking a whole lot better, and this is exactly what we were wanting. So now let's preview this in Eevee. Here in Eevee, you can see that everything is dark. To fix that, you can go down and select World, then we will need an HDRI. From here, add an HDRI by searching Environment Texture, now open to find an HDRI that you want. A good place to get them is over here at Polyhaven. It's a free resource for HDRIs. You can just select any of these that you want and you're good to go. I already have one that I want to use and it's actually one that I took myself up in Olympic National Park. With the HDRI loaded, you can see it looks a lot better. And if you change this to cycles, it will look even better, though this will make rendering time a whole lot more if you decide to do this way. Okay, back to EV to actually working around with this. To get the HDRI so that you're not actually seeing this background, all you need to do is search transparent, and you can see under film, select transparent, and boom, you get this grid background. And now it should not be rendering in your final render. Okay, so now we're almost there to actually start animating the camera. But first, if we go and find a lantern or some other glowing object, yeah, like this portal, this portal should be glowing, but you can see it isn't. To fix that, we are going to go back into object shading, and this is when we need to create a separate material that we're just going to name glow. And we're going to assign this to any glowing object. To do this, all you need to do is where it says display number of users, you need to select it, and there you get material number one, like that, and we're going to rename it Glow. Now you can delete the principal BSDF, you'll see that you get a blank screen of nothing, that's fine. Then search emission, add the emission node, and plug it into surface. And now you can increase the strength to, yeah, that I'd say that looks good. And now it's actually going to be emitting some glow. Okay, so you can see I found another object that should be glowing. The issue with this one is if you change it to glow, you'll see the black screen around it, which is not where we're wanting. So change it back and then we can separate this into another one and we can plug that into that, its own emission, and then just increase the emission strength that way. Just to show you how this works even better, is here in Cycles, you can see the glow of the fire while everything else is dark. This is why we are adding the glow. And if you go up to this portal, it should also be doing the same thing. Okay, so one more thing. If you select the water, you can make this its own material and make it more shiny and a little more transmissive, depending on wanting what you're wanting. If you're wanting it to look like a more realistic type of water, or if you want it to be the Minecraft water. I'm going to play around with these settings, and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, so there we go. I just did a very basic edit. All I did was add a color ramp to make it a different type of blue, and then I decreased the roughness, increased the transmission, and I like this look. This is what I'm going to be rendering with. Now let's just go to the default layout menu. 
Okay, so here we are, and let's add a camera. Command zero to go into the camera, and now we can move it around. And now find a good spot that you would like a render of. Okay, so here is a perspective that I kind of like. To render it, we're just going to decrease the samples. I'm going to change it to like 200. That should be good for this purpose. I'm going to leave denoise on. If you don't like how it looks when denoise is applied, then just uncheck it and you should be good. Then feel free to apply any other settings that you want, but then click render and render image. And you can do this to any other part of your Minecraft world. Okay, so I'm going to leave that camera there and add another camera. Okay, so I think it would be kind of cool to see this camera rise out of the water. With your camera selected, hit N to open up the side pa panel to see location and rotation, and then hit I to insert keyframes. Now you can see on the timeline these little keyframes appear. Now we can just move forward and bring it Choose the next location you would like it to see. Which for me, I think will be pointing like directly upward, like that. And if we play that back, you can see that it's pretty fast. So you can just adjust these keyframes. Now we can go to the next position. which is this cool shot by the leaves. Now if we play that, you can see it comes out and kind of slides on over. So there we go, it comes out of the water, kind of slides on over there, and then shoots off. And then we get this nice little above shot. So I would recommend just rendering it to the absolute bare minimum of number of frames, especially if you're doing this in cycles, because it will take a while. So 171, and then just duplicate that frame in like your editing software. But now if you're also wanting to create some camera shake, there's an easy way to do this. All you need to do is open up another panel to see the graph editor. Now you can see that with the graph editor open, I'm going to expand this even more because it's kind of hard to see and we don't really need the timeline very much so I'm just going to push it all over there. Okay so to create this camera shake you can select something like the X rotation which will create camera shake along here. Then you can go to modifiers and select noise. Now if you play it you'll see that it's really intense and not at all something that is very pleasant to watch. So if you change the scale, it will change it, and it's not quite as intense, though it's still pretty bad. So just decrease the strength. I want ever so slightly it blinging up. Even that's a bit much. So we'll decrease that even more. Now if we go and apply this to the other ones, it might look good, and if it doesn't, then we can just adjust it. A nice way to do this is just copy by hitting that button right there, then select a Y rotation, paste, select the Z rotation, paste. And now if we play this, you can see that it's kind of getting some wobble. So if this isn't what you want, you can of course adjust it a little more, but once you render it, it should look pretty cool like this. Thanks for watching, here's some extra renders I did, otherwise I hope this helped, and I'll see you later. Bye!